Yeah, yeah, come. Morning. Good morning, morning, sir. Please sit down. Thank Sankit. you, sir. Mr. Ankit, you joined the uh, civil accounts in 2020. Yes, sir. And uh, you're currently posted uh, on an assignment. Are you on leave or you're uh, in the service at the moment? So I'm undergoing training in uh, CTI, sir, in NGAF, uh, near Hojkhaz, sir. Okay. So Faridabad phase is over. It was only for six months. Our parent academy is NGAF. It is located near Hojkhaz. Near Hojkhaz? Hojkhaz. So uh, this is what? How many attempts have you made for the civil services? Sir, this will be my fourth attempt, sir. Your fourth attempt. So you qualified for the ICAS in the third attempt? In the second attempt. Okay. Then uh, for, for interview? Uh, this is my third interview, sir. I see. Okay. Shall you? Promotion prospects, you can become what is the director general civil accounts or what do you call them? The top man? The controller general. Controller general, CG, uh, CGCA. So, why do you want to change? Is it promotions are almost as quick, close to IAS as possible, you know? Sir, IAS as a career, it, it provides a lot of diversity. Uh, for example, you have opportunity to work in the field. You work with this provides you. This also provides you any any number of opportunity getting on deputation to ministries, and you go to civil aviation. I've seen your colleagues going to all kinds of different places. Anyway, so you are stationed in the MP nowadays. I mean, otherwise you are from MP. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So, what do you think of uh, the latest on Delhi University? There is a central university entrance examination and all that. So what do you think of that? Sir, I think it's a uh, good step towards uh, uh, bringing some uniformity in terms of entrance examination. Many people say, many people say that this uh, uh, will give rise to many of these coaching institutes. Uh, I would see this system as uh, relatively better than the last system because uh, uh, earlier, for example, DU, it used to consider 12th percentage marks as one of the criteria. And there is very significant difference between uh, CBSC, ICSE and different state boards. So sometimes it's not a fair play, uh, opportunity for people from state votes, which otherwise find it difficult to qualify in some central universities. What is the controversy going on with Xiaomi? You know the manufacturers of the phone. Uh, yes, ED had attached around 5,000 crores uh, worth of money uh, due to violation of FEMA X. Where is it standing now? Sir, I'm not aware of the exact current development, sir. Some controversy about the COVID number of deaths in India. Uh, WHO has come up with recent estimates, sir, and uh, according to WHO, the uh, official death. So, what is our number? Sir, our number is around 44.7 lakhs, uh, uh, but however, the WHO number is around 40. And they have also come about uh, Pakistan. How much have they said they are inflated by any idea? Have you heard of uh, Section 124A? Again, there is something growing up on that. Are you aware of that? Yeah, quickly. Sir, uh, recently in Maharashtra, two of the members of parliament were charged with sedition due to uh, their attempt to recite Hanuman Chalisa. Uh, Supreme Court is also hearing the constitutional validity. Sir. On 10th of May, I think the hearing is going to take place in Supreme Court. What is the latest stand of the government of India? Uh, sir, uh, Attorney General has said that the law should remain. It's uh, constitutionally valid. Uh, and he cited Kedarnath Singh. Uh, Kedana Singh judgment of 1962, which upheld the constitutional validity of this law. So, but, what is the standard they have taken? The reason? Because there is a issue of uh, misuse also. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Uh, you are an economics master's in economics. Okay, tell me, what is the Gini coefficient? Ma'am, it's a coefficient which measures the income and wealth inequality in a particular economy. The distribution, right? And what are the recent developments in development economics? How are they doing the variables that affect economic development? What are the theories popular? Uh, I'm not aware. No. Okay, who is Gini? Not aware. Gini coefficient? Ita I... Italian statistician who developed this theory in 1920s. Quite popular theory, no? Uh, Alright, what is happening in uh, neighborhood Sri Lanka? It is undergoing very, uh, historically very significant economic crisis. Uh, their foreign uh, uh, exchange is almost uh, depleting. Uh, the the high inflation rate is very high. Uh, there is shortage of uh, fuel and food supplies there. 
and there's lot of uh, there has been lot of uh, protest from the opposition side and from the public and what is the latest development in politics has the government stepped down is it offering to resign what is happening the no confidence motion has been moved but uh, uh, i think they declare a emergency also on friday they declare emergency a second okay. time um in the food security index where does india rank what's the india's rank not aware of the exact position all right uh, what is food security what do you mean by food security it is a major issue isn't it it's one of our uh, economic uh, development factors what is food security how is india ensuring food security Ma'am, food security is uh, available. Physical availability of good. It should be affordable. It should be accessible to every uh, uh, person in uh, in the economy. Yeah. Uh, with respect to ensuring food security, government has enacted Food Security Act in 2013. And uh, uh, during COVID times, uh, government came up with Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana, which gives additional amount of grain to the poor people. There are many schemes, no, in the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana. several schemes which uh, relate to many things like even oil seeds very important uh, for distribution okay just uh, learn that all right in world uh, press freedom index recently it came out where india stands have we gone up or have we slipped what do you think ah yes why not aware of the exact reasons but there is uh, you know it went down so obviously that was there has been cases in various states that uh, a journalist was targeted there has been violence against journalist especially in the local media uh, that might be one of the reason so now we are 142 out of 180 countries not a very good uh, figure right have you heard of sin fan ireland northern ireland sin fan i will go through and i'm not aware at this moment all right thank you Tell me, what have been major amendments in IBC Code two zero one six, and how it has performed in sorting out the issues for which it was created? Uh, sir, I am not aware of any recent amendments. Uh, not recent. I have been saying what all amendments have taken place to facilitate the proceeding. Sir, I am not able to recall the okay. any amendments. But sec and what is its contribution? As far as contribution of this act is concerned, sir, the the insolvency time has come come down recently, uh, significantly. Earlier it used to be more than uh, two three years. Now it has come down to one or one point five years. That's one of the most important thing. And second, it has helped in uh, uh, improving our rank and ease of doing business. It is very easy for company to uh, go for insolvency, and the creditors who are who are not able to recover their dues earlier. Uh, through it, uh, some hair, uh, some cut in their uh, recovery, but they are able to recover some part. Hair cut, and then RBI of has course. been given some powers. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, if in case any uh, corporate entity or any company fails to uh, repay it uh, a loan, RBI can recommend it uh, the very uh, at the same time uh, at the very time to the IBC panel. RBI has to be RBI can recommend or RBI can direct that financial company, banking company. to go for ibc for this the situation sir rbi can direct the bank to take the company to ibc further suppose resolution plan is prepared and finalized uh, will the shareholders have any say uh, sir the promoters will not have any say uh, the ibc will appoint a uh, you know, insolvency uh, expert and they will in the meantime they will manage the company and they will take the proceedings forward when the plan is finalized Whether the shareholders can have any say under the law, sir, I am not aware. I don't think so, but I am not very sure, sir. Yes, sir. Then uh, suppose after having uh, 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 submitted the proceedings, all the concerned parties want to withdraw. So, what is the uh, what is the uh, consensus? How much? percent of the vote they should have in coc committee of creditors sir i am not aware of the exact percentage uh, tell me then let us come to some other subject what are the geopolitical geostrategic changes going to happen 
uh, after this Russia Ukraine war in Europe. Think about it and then. So, one of the most significant change after when the war gets over is uh, Russia will be more aligned towards China and it. It's already is becoming and will become a junior partner to Russia, which was not the case earlier. Second, uh, Europe will be more invested in security. Earlier, uh, it was dependent in NATO uh, with NATO and uh, America for its security. For example, Germany has started uh, its defense expendi uh, uh, to have a more defense expenditure on, to ensure uh, this does not happen in Europe. Self-defense. Self-defense. Uh, Russia will uh, become uh, even more weak. It was already 1.8 trillion dollar economy earlier. And it will not be a very uh, significant power in world affairs if situation goes like this. Very good. Fourth, uh, China might use this uh, as a template to uh, further its agenda with respect to Taiwan, sir. If Russia becomes successful, then it might be a template for China and Taiwan, sir. That might be. Very good. And uh, what, what will happen to Western Europe or the NATO or the EU? Sir, NATO is becoming more uh, uh, cohesive with because they have a common threat right now. Okay. And there are certain Nordic countries, for example, Finland and Sweden, they are thinking of joining NATO. That will be one of the... Because for the last 70 years, they were uh, 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 advocate of neutrality with respect to Russia and NATO. But they are now actively thinking towards joining it, sir. And uh, <clears throat> their equation with the US, what will happen? Uh, Western Europe. So it will be more strengthen because uh, to uh, ensure more defense, they will have to have a lot of uh, 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 defense procurement from US or uh, in terms of NATO, there will might be some uh, 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 difference of opinion because uh, US generally dominates NATO and uh, European power, gen uh, for example, Germany was not very comfortable with respect to their confrontation with Russia. So there might be some difference of opinion there. But uh, they might be more independent. Now, <laughs> the third subject. Uh, I want you to discuss is the um, Taliban in Afghanistan. How, what uh, will happen now in Afghanistan and uh, their relation with Pakistan, let us say. After uh, the, their takeover in August 2021, sir, they have not upheld what they promised the international community. For example, respecting human rights, especially women's rights. Uh, recently, they have imposed a ban uh, on uh, women going out without burqa. That is one thing, sir. And uh, with respect to the relation with uh, Pakistan, I think uh, Taliban is trying to assert its independent uh, position with re in respect to uh, international relation. Uh, though they were dependent on Pakistan during insurgency time, but uh, when they are having go uh, the government power, they are assigned uh, try to assert their sovereignty. And there has been a lot of confrontation. For example, there has been a lot of blast uh, with respect to uh, the uh, Pakistan branch of. No, it is not a branch as such. Only name is common. You know the origin of word Taliban, Talib. So it means student, sir. Uh, 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 it was originated, I think, 1995. What about the northern uh, part of Afghanistan, say Mazar, Mazar Sarif area? Uh, sir, uh, Taliban, is, as we know, that it's a assembled a lot of warlords. And in uh, Mazar Sarif and Panjshir area, there is a lot of warlords which were not very comfortable with uh, Taliban takeover. And earlier there was a lot of resistance. The, as well, the uh, vice president of the Afghanistan went there and studied resistance. But I am not aware of the, any current uh, movement which is happening there. What is the status today? There is no movement from the status means their equation with the Mazar Sharif of people. I have no idea. Thank you. Reserve Bank has been in the news recently. How and why? Sir, Reserve Bank only few days back came up uh, with change in their important rates, but it was not usual. Generally, it was supposed to be in June, but they came up and they increased their repo rate by 0.4%. They also increased CRR by 0.5%. Uh, so that was, and it has, RBI has observed that uh, inflation is already breaching the upper bound, which was the mandate of uh, MPC, Monetary Policy Committee, sir. What was the threshold that they were supposed to achieve and attain? Sir, uh, their mandate was to have inflation between 2% and 6%, sir. And what has been the inflation in the last two years? Sir, in the last two years, it was just below 6%, but only recently it has reached around 7%, sir. Across 6% several times in the last two years. Uh, why was it, why has this policy been criticized by certain schools of thought? 
sir, the economist who uh, who was supply side economist, uh, they propose that the current inflation is due to supply side, and if there is increase in rate, it will uh, it will not cut the imports much. It will make them costlier because our imports are non-elastic. For example, uh, oil. Secondly, it will make uh, cost of production even higher because uh, when uh, companies have to borrow money to produce, the rate of inter- uh, with in- in- uh, increase in rate of interest, the cost of production will go up. So it will not help much with respect to taming inflation. Uh, rather, government and RBI should uh, look into the supply side of the economy and try to handle those bottlenecks, sir. But this uh, increase in the rates, it was to mop up liquidity, to tame inflation, and uh, the school of thought that I was talking about was that the FPC was late in their decision. Late, I mean, was high for the last several months, one year in fact. And they have been criticized that why it was late. And if this is so late, will it really be able to tame inflation in a short while? Wuhan coronavirus originated, so called, and this Russian Ukraine war. What has it shown to the world? In terms of interdependencies, I would say that uh, uh, in some supply chain, gov- uh, governments and corporates are looking to a resilience uh, and not only efficiency, sir. Because uh, earlier the focus was extremely focused on efficiency of the production, but excessive dependence on certain countries uh, and risk of possible uh, 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 disruption might hamper. We have seen in COVID uh, all the supply chains due to uh, lockdowns in China, China got tempered. So, government, for example, India also has been proposing Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, to reduce the dependency on global value chains. So, that is one thing that I, I can see with respect to Wuhan virus and Ukraine crisis. For uh, If you look at Ukraine crisis also, government, uh, countries, especially African countries are dependent for the grain supplies from uh, Ukraine. India also dependent on for sunflower oil supply from Ukraine. So, there has been push for diversifying their supply chains and, their, uh, and imp- uh, overall reducing their dependency on external ones. Sir. So, how does it relate to the theory of comparative advantages in international trade, which promotes global supply chain? So, it's against the free trade. Uh, they, we have seen a lot of uh, the global uh, uh, trade environment has weakened, and now governments are more relying on self-dependence. So, it's moving away from the idea of competitive advantage. Sir. So, is that okay or not okay? As a whole, it's not okay, sir. But uh, I would say that in some instance, because for example, in critical supplies, countries have to be self-dependent. Uh, for example, in pharmaceuticals, uh, government is moving towards indigenization of API, sir. So that is one thing we should not depend excessively on other countries. Sir. It uh, it actually harps on the fact that self-reliance is important. Building internal capacities in an economy is also important. But at the same time, you cannot ignore the fact that there are comparative advantages in export and import. Right. Now, um, talking about interdependency, you have heard the Sustainable Development Goals. What is it and what do you understand by it? So, Sustainable uh, Development Goals are set of goals prescribed uh, which were decided in UN and they are to be achieved by 2030. Uh, and uh, There have been several goals which include elimination of absolute poverty, uh, elimination of hunger, uh, uh, availability of drinking water to all. Uh, these are some of the goals which uh, uh, the globe world has to attain in order to sustain uh, uh, human population in a dignified way, sir. And how will it be monitored? I am not aware of the exact uh, terminologies, but uh, uh, UN has a committee which regularly uh, uh, monitors the status of uh, countries with respect to their targets in SDG. And India to Niti Aayog has a uh, has a uh, platform through which they compare states in terms of their status uh, towards achieving SDG goals, sir. They are basically targets that have to be defined nationally and they are monitored by institutions like Niti Aayog and other departments. Uh, what do you understand by population stabilization? So when the population, uh, not only in terms of rate of birth, which is, uh, it should be at replacement level, but in terms of demography, it should be, uh, all percentage it should be constant. Uh, it should not be inverted pyramid, it should not be vertical pyramid. The percentage of people in every age group should be uh, uh, similar and the replacement birth rate should be around replacement rate which should be around 2.1 uh, that is population stabilization. Sir. What is India's rate nowadays? Uh, sir, overall uh, I think in the, uh, the national family health survey it has gone down uh, uh, the replacement rate but in certain age states such as uh, Bihar and Manipur it is little higher than that. Sir. It's around 2 and it's below replacement level but we have variations across the year. Thank you. Yes, sir.
Okay. You had peer, political science and international relations. Did you study the constitutions of other countries also apart from India? The US for example? Uh, no sir, it was not covered in the UPSC syllabus. Okay. Now, uh, which political, western political thinker impressed you the most? I, I would say Aristotle sir. Uh, okay. Because uh, uh, he, he was a person who suppose, uh, prescribed golden mean. He was not a philosopher of extremes. Uh, uh, in terms of, he believed in constitutionalism also. He, uh, for example, uh, Plato uh, believed in the theory of philosopher king. The philosopher king should have all the powers and uh, he or she cannot be questioned because he knows all the things. He has all the wisdom in the world. However, Aristotle uh, differ, uh, differed from, um, from Plato, which, uh, who was his teacher. And he uh, provided constitution as the best way uh, to guide any society and economy. And though Plato also in his later life, he also moved away from the theory of philosopher king and supported constitutionalism. Sir. Okay, right. Now, uh, you heard of the Organization for Islamic Cooperation. They met in, uh, their foreign ministers met in Pakistan in March. And uh, as is their want, they once again made a reference to Jammu and Kashmir. What did they say about that? So, not aware of the exact uh, observation made by OIC. What do they normally say about Kashmir? OIC, every meeting, what do they say? Uh, respecting human rights. Uh, yeah, human rights violations. Right Self determination of people in Jammu and Kashmir. Now, the new, when the new uh, Pakistan Prime Minister took over, uh, he was welcomed by our Prime Minister. So, his response was that uh, yes, we should normalize relations, but that can only happen once the JNK situation is resolved. And he added that uh, UN resolutions should be implemented. What is India's stand so far as the UN resolutions are concerned? Sir, India respects uh, resolution by UNSC and uh, UNSC resolution itself says ki first Pakistan should vacate all the illegally occupied territory of Jammu and Kashmir as a precondition towards any normalization in, uh, in the uh, in the state. Uh, so, uh, and secondly, India has rejected call for plebiscite which was called in UNSC resolutions. Yeah, because it's become outdated now. That's uh, okay. Now, every day you read in the papers about uh, terror attacks in the valley. Which groups are involved in this? It's mentioned in the newspapers every day. So, one of the most prominent group is Lashkar-e Taiba, then Hezbollah Mujahid, uh, Hezbollah Mujahideen, and uh, uh, there's been a lot of local groups also, sir, uh, which I'm not aware of the exact name. But these are the two important terror groups which has, which has been operated both in Pakistan and India. Yeah, and Jashim Mohammed. Yes. Uh, who is the leader of the lashkar e taiba Hafiz Saeed, sir. Hafiz Saeed. Was, uh, which was their most major attack of the L.E.T. in India? It's the 2008 Mumbai attacks. Mumbai attack. And of the Jashim Mohammed? Sir, I think parliamentary attack of 2001, sir. In which one person was ultimately convicted and hanged. Who was that? Sir, Afzal Guru. Afzal Guru. Okay. Now, you know, when in 2019, the government uh, decided to withdraw Article 370 and Article 35A, what was the significance of withdrawing Article 35A? In terms of internal issue uh, with respect to India, sir, uh, 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 it, was, uh, it was in the election manifesto of the ruling party, uh, which was… Uh, That's true, but what did it, what did Article 35A provide, which was against a very large segment of the population. That's why it was withdrawn. Uh, Article 35A prescribed for uh, local domicile status. Uh, uh, it, it was… Uh, local domicile status by the state government. So, what happened in that? Any idea? Did they exclude a large number of people? Yes, sir. They excluded, uh, for example, Kashmir, uh, the, uh, Pakistan, the people who came from Pakistan during… Pakistan. West Pakistan refugees were denied this and because they were not the res, they were not given the uh, resident status, they could not vote in the state assembly elections. Although government of India gave them permission to vote in the parliamentary elections, but they couldn't do that. Okay, right. Now you must have read in the papers about two Supreme Court judges having been appointed very recently, or oh, in fact within 48 hours. What is the procedure for appointment of a Supreme Court judge? Uh, sir, so the Collegium of Supreme Court, which is consisting of CGI and the uh, four senior most judges, uh, they recommend the name for the judge uh, to be appointed in Supreme Court to law and ministry. And Correct. You got it. Right. So, uh, Mr. Ankit, we end your mock interview. I will give you a feedback.
Now you've already gone before a UPSC board on three occasions. Two occasions. Two occasions. And this will be your third occasion. Right. Now, you see, normally uh, questions would emanate either from your DAF or from uh, current affairs. Now, you have political science and international relations as your optional subject. So, you should be prepared to answer questions on that. You belong to Madhya Pradesh as your place of birth. Are you, uh, you studied there also or not? Yes, sir. I did my schooling till 10th in uh, Madhya Pradesh. So, you know, and then you, you were in Katak, and then in Kanpur. That's all right. But, you know, some, something about your own state. The one thing which re comes to mind is the Kane Betwa link project, which has been formally sanctioned by the government of India. What is the significance of that? And things relating to your state generally, uh, you can be asked questions on that. Now, you are a mechanical engineer and you are an economic student. So, you know the current economic status situation, there is lot this, this talk of coal shortage. Is it a fact or is it just uh, politics which is happening? And uh, the budget which uh, came out earlier, you know, what are the major projects of the central government under the budget? What is the status of some of the important ones? That I think you should brush up. Then, of course, you know, you have, you were a member of the NCC. When was it started? What is the objective of the NCC? What is its motto? What did you gain by being a member of the NCC? Then you were, uh, you were interested in Indian classical uh, music. So, you know, questions relating to that. Who are the great classical thing, uh, musicians? Whom do you like the best? Why? Eh? Now, this Bosch Limited, you were working there uh, as an assistant manager. What was your role there? Sir, I was uh, in charge of industrial engineering of certain components and then uh, capital investment planning for the plant. Bosch is a, is a German uh, company, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, what what does it do? Uh, what, uh, what is its role in, in the country? Uh, how much uh, investment uh, is there of this company in the country? You know, those kind of things. And of course, you were asked as to why do you wish to uh, aspire for the IAS because you have now given IAS and IPS and foreign service as your uh, things. So, uh, that, that of course is your option. You can always say that, you, I mean, this is not a bad service, but you aspire for uh, these, uh, for whatever reason. You said that they have more, uh, uh, you know, variety and all. Take it, that's all right. That's up to you. That's uh, not an issue. Current affairs, uh, your interview is on the 25th. So, I hope you are reading a newspaper regularly. Are you still under training or are you, have you taken leave? Sir, I am undergoing training, sir. Right now, I have taken leave for 15 days, sir. So, you read newspapers very carefully because, you know, current affairs is something on which you can be asked uh, anything. And there is no parameter on that, you know, it can be from <laughs> anything can be asked. So, the best thing is to, you know, know something about within the country, what's happening in Jammu and Kashmir. Developments are taking place in the northeast in a very rapid fashion, what is happening there. Uh, internally, uh, you know, various issues are coming up. This, the Home Minister had gone to Assam, uh, uh, no, West Bengal, and he said that CAA will be implemented. So, the nitty-gritty of the CAA, the nitty-gritty of the NRC, these are contentious issues which have been opposed by a large number of political parties. You should be able to, uh, you know, understand uh, all those things, right? Otherwise, you are doing very well. I mean, uh, you have been responding very well. So, the first thing would be that, you know, you will be given a, 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 a gist of this interview which happened in an electronic form. So, go through that. See which are the questions on which you are not very, very sure. Brush up on that. Okay. And uh, otherwise, read a newspaper very regularly. Hmm? And uh, the more you have, more information you have, the better you will do. And we sincerely hope that you will be able to crack the <laughs> civil services again this time. Okay, chale. Okay, wish you all the best. Right, right. Okay. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon to never miss an update.